and we hide in the shadow of the king. Hello everyone, it's David Velascom, and I'm showing you guys a really cool chess game that was played at the FIDE Women's World Cup in 2021. Now, this game was played between um, Gorshkina Alexandra and Koshinik Alexandra. Alright, so in this position, um, Black has just played her king out to e5. And White has a very, very nice move here that would allow for the game to be drawn. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the right combination. Alrighty, so the right move is to play the pawn out to d7. Now, if the bishop takes, that doesn't work because then the, the rook could take here. So that, that can't work. So therefore, if instead uh, the rook were to take, then bishop out to g4. Now, the bishop cannot move because the rook is lost, so it has to be captured. Um, well, it has to capture on g4, and once that happens, then white can take the pawn here on c2, have a rook versus a rook and the bishop, and that is a drawn endgame. But white doesn't find that nice move and ends up playing king out to e3, and she starts to get into a much worse position. Yeah, rook to d3 is play a very nice move. This forces the white king to move backwards and it will allow the black king to get out to f4. Now, if black had instead played rook takes d6, we can see that after bishop to e2, the rook out to d3 is no longer possible. And this makes it very hard for the black king to get out to f4, and that is important to be able to, to win the game. And black really cannot make any progress. Yeah, so black can move the bishop, and white can just move the rook around, and there's no way for black to do anything. Yeah, if black were to at some point play rook out to c5 in order to try and tie down the rook so the rook can't just move as a pawn would promote, then the white king is now able to move out to d2. So even though black is able to get the king out to f4, it doesn't work here because the white king is close enough to the pawn that uh, the game will be able to be saved. Uh, so like some more moves could happen, and now the rook can move as a king is helping to guard c1. And uh, this is another trick to try and pin the bishop to the king, to draw the king away from the, the defense of the pawn. But after rook check, the rook can move out here to c4, and there's just nothing to it. Yeah, if bishop f3 is played to try and win a piece, then king out to e3, if the bishop captures, then the rook is able to pin it. Yeah, and if, uh, if the rook captures, then the king captures here, and the rook is just in the wrong position to help the pawn to promote. So white would be able to win that pawn. Yeah, so so essentially that's that's what's going on there. Let's head on back to the main line. Alrighty, so after king to e3, uh, rook to d3 check is play, very nice move, uh, then capturing on d6. Because now white does not have bishop to e2, which would stop the rook, white uh, plays king e1 here. Yeah, if king e3 is tried, then rook to d3, and that doesn't work. Yeah, the black king gets in closer, and white's position is just going to fall apart here. And this is um, the illustration for it. So, so if, uh, if the bishop were to move someplace else, let's say that it goes out to b7, then the rook out to d1 is going to win on the spot. Yeah, the rook has to capture, and then bishop comes with check, the king has to move, but then the pawn can promote uh, and take in the rook at the same time. There is no defense to that. So, therefore, instead, the bishop really has to move, but it's going to stay here on this diagonal to stop bishop out to g4 uh, from happening after rook moves here. So, therefore, rook out to h3 is played to try and chase the bishop away and then look to win that way. 
and yeah, but there, there there's really no defense here. Yeah, there's there's no defense. So the rook could move over and give a check. The bishop could move back to try and cut the rook off, but bishop here, and if king takes, then the rook can take with check, and then the pawn would promote to a queen. So that is what's going on there. And if the bishop were to move uh, to a square like here, then I think the solution is to give a check, yes. Give a check, and the king cannot move forward. All of that is covered. The king has to move back, and then there's another check. And uh, black would be able to win. It's actually, actually not a check first. King here threatens checkmate and threatens to win the rook. The king can't defend the rook. The king moves. There's a check, and the rook is lost. So that's that's the the main idea there. All right. So um, heading back to the actual game, rook takes d6 is played. King to e1 instead of king out to e3, which we just looked at, and we can see that that doesn't work. Uh, Black's attack is just too strong. So king e1 was tried. Then king to d4, bishop to d1. Yeah, what else can can white do? I mean, if white tries bishop to g4, it, it doesn't work here. Yeah, the bishop does not have to take. The rook is not in any danger, so the bishop can simply move. And then we see that white is just in a much worse position. The king moves in, and there is going to be a checkmate. There is, is even, you know, a chance of rook h2 to try and win the rook if there is no checkmate there. So either way, uh, white is just going to be losing there. So bishop d1 is tried. Yeah, because if pawn were to capture, um, so bishop d1, if, if pawn were to capture, then white would be able to get into an equal endgame. Yeah, because the rook can hold against the rook and the bishop. That, that, that would be a draw. So, black doesn't do that though. Black plays the king out to e3, and now white is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, a lot of trouble. If the bishop were to move, then the rook could attack the bishop, and once it moves again, rook here check is potential checkmate. Uh, if it's not going to be checkmate right away, well, it will be pretty soon. Yeah, so, so that, 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 that really can't work. Therefore, uh, rook takes is tried. Now, the bishop takes was possible too, but then rook to g6 and that doesn't check mate. If the king were to move, then bishop check forces the king back and then there is a checkmate anyway. So, that can't work. Therefore, rook takes on c2 was tried, because at least this way, white gets a bishop versus a rook, which this would be a draw, if the position were different. Yeah, if the white king were maybe on e5, you know, then this could be a draw. Yeah, actually it, it would be. But since the king is on e1, it's going to be uh, losing. It's just um, a bit unfortunate. So, rook out to d2 was played by Kostinik. Now she could have won immediately with rook a6. And it doesn't checkmate, so that's the main idea. And it also looks to win that bishop. It's just um, badly placed on c2. So if king moves out to f1 to escape the checkmate, then we give a check, the king moves, and then rook out to g2, and the bishop is lost. So if the king or the bishop were in a different position here for white, then it, it would be a draw. But in this position, it's not. So Stenic plays rook out to d2 though, um, which wasn't the best move, but they were in time pressure at this point. Bishop to f5, and how does black win this? It is, it is very difficult, but I can show you guys how to do it. So the rook attacks the bishop again, which does not give the white king any time to relocate. That is very important. You want to keep attacking that bishop. Now, um, bishop to d5 was played in the game, but if white tries to be a, a little bit more stubborn, 
and plays Big Shabbat to D7, then there are some really cool tricks that Black, that Black has here. So Rook F7 is played. Now, if Bishop out to B5, then, then Rook to B7, and this is going to be winning because of checkmate. Yeah, so, so that, that can't be played. So if White is a little bit more stubborn and plays Bishop out to E6, then we have Rook out to E7 and we hide in the shadow of the king. This is really cool. This is what I really wanted to show you guys today. Uh, the other stuff is cool too, but this is really the icing on the cake. This is like the coolest thing. So if the white bishop were to move here, then the king could move with the check and win the bishop. So that is a discovered check. Therefore, bishop h3 makes a lot of sense because the bishop can't go here or here or here because of discovered checks with the king. Um, and it can't go here or here, it would be captured. So it has to go, it has to go either here or, or over here. That's like the only squares for the bishop to go to where it's not going to be immediately lost. So it plays bishop h3, then rook h7 is played. If the bishop moves, then we have a checkmate. So bishop out to g2 is tried to stop rook h1. But then we have rook out to a7, and once again we thought in checkmate, so the king has to move. He has no other option. And so if the king was out to d1, which if the king goes to f1, then um, then that's also going to be a checkmate, because the bishop blocks the escape square for the king. So the king has to move to um, d1, and then we give a check, and another check, and we win the bishop this way. So that is how you can win these end games. Now. Going back to the main line. Okay, so rook out to f6, bishop out to d5 was played, rook out to d6, and then bishop to b3. Well, that allowed rook to b6, which if the bishop goes like here, then it's checkmate. So the bishop goes out to c2 just to stop the checkmate, but then rook out to a6 is played, and we reach the position that we had earlier, and white resigned here. Yeah, because this is a position where checkmate is threatened. If the king were to move, then we have a check and we win the bishop. So that's, that's what's going on there. Well, thank you all for watching and hope that you enjoyed this video. It's a really cool, really fascinating endgame. And I will see you next time.